In the early hours one morning in 1987 in Ouagadougou, the capital of Burkina Faso, while preparing for a cabinet meeting, Thomas Sankara, then Africa's youngest head of state, was assassinated in a military coup. His best friend and second in command, Blaise Compaore, took over. Sankara was something of an icon across Africa as he had adopted an anti-imperialist foreign policy which challenged the dominance of France who even after independence retained close political security and economic ties with many of its former colonies in Africa the man that took over from Sankara steered Burkina Faso back into a strong alliance with the French Without zealously jumping into conclusions, we must fall back to a concept in law known as qui bono. This concept is used to simply identify motive. It suggests those who are the greatest beneficiaries of something are the most likely to be responsible for it. We must ask who stood to gain the most from taking out the man who became known as Africa's Che Guevara. Welcome to Reason Africa. France's presence in Africa dates to the 17th century, but the main period of colonial expansion came in the 19th century with the invasion of Ottoman Algeria in 1830. Conquests in West Africa and Equatorial Africa during the so-called Scramble for Africa and the establishment of protectorates in Tunisia and Morocco in the decades before the First World War. To these were added parts of German Togo and Cameroon assigned to France after the war. By 1930, French colonial Africa encompassed the vast confederations of French West Africa, French Equatorial Africa, the Western Maghreb, the Indian Ocean islands of Madagascar, Reunion and the Comoros, and Djibouti in the Horn of Africa. With this massive African empire, French rule was characterized by sharp contradictions between a commitment to the civilization of indigenous people through cultural, political and economic reform and the harsh realities of violent conquest and economic exploitation. To protect their strategic interests in Africa, France maintained a dense web of connections to their ex-colonies. Though direct rule ended in the early 1960s, French influence over its former possessions continued and has been facing accusations of hanging on to its empire by all means necessary through a set of structural and relational arrangements kept carefully invisible to the naked eye but loosely known as France Afrique. Part France, part Africa. The term France Afrique refers to a unique and absolutely intriguing political phenomenon. The continuous synergy and suppression of supposedly sovereign African states by their former colonial master. The process started in the mid 50s and early 60s when defeats in French Indochina and then in Algeria persuaded Paris that it was wiser to grant nominal independence to its colonies in sub-Saharan Africa. while keeping a tight rein on them on the other hand the united states supported france's continuing presence in africa to prevent the region from falling under soviet influence during the cold war let's break it down the goal of colonialism was universal profit whether it was gold from south africa rubber from the congo or gold from ghana The goal was to extract economic benefits for the colonizing government. However, France and Britain had fundamentally different approaches to their colonial rule. While the Brits wanted to exploit resources and create a profitable environment for its settler communities, the French had an additional goal of transforming the African populations within its sphere of influence into French citizens through assimilation. So rather than merely govern, they would attempt to westernize them. Many of the British colonies achieved independence through violent means. Therefore, it was easier for the colonies to disengage. French colonies, however, disengaged through non-violent means and gained independence peacefully. Therefore, retained deep running links with Paris. 
Charles de Gaulle became the first French president elected under the Fifth Republic in 1958. He believed in a strong head of state and started the process of putting in place plans for France's long-term strategic geopolitical agenda for Africa. He saw close links with France's former African colonies as an opportunity to enhance France's image on the world stage. Shortly after, France proposed a referendum across the colonies to vote on whether to attain independence or continue the relationship with France under the new French African community. All colonies chose to continue with the relationship except Guinea, which voted overwhelmingly for independence. Following the 95% no vote, de Gaulle's government immediately pulled out more than 4,000 civil servants, judges, teachers, doctors and technicians, instructing them to sabotage everything they left behind. To the 14 other French colonies, however, the message was not that of a mere divorce. It was an example, illustrating that the consequences of standing up to Paris is to risk losing everything. After attaining independence, African heads of state were handpicked by Paris after two job interviews. First with Jacques Foucault, President de Gaulle's trusted advisor on African matters, then with de Gaulle himself. If the first screening was conclusive, nothing was ever said on record of course, but the African president thus elected was told what was expected of him, to put the resources of his country at France's disposal and routinely vote alongside France at the United Nations. France Afrique entailed another Trojan horse move. The creation in 1945 of the CFA Franc, an acronym for Franc of the African Financial Community, which became the currency of French colonies south of the Sahara. The currency continued to exist even after the colonies had achieved their independence in the early 1960s. It was pegged to the French franc and later to the euro since 1999 and its convertibility is guaranteed by the French treasury. Despite sharing the same exchange rate, the CFA franc is actually two currencies. The Central African CFA franc, which is used in six countries, Cameroon, the Central African Republic, Chad, Congo Brazzaville, Equatorial Guinea and Gabon, and the West African CFA franc used in Benin, Burkina Faso, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Mali, Niger, Senegal and Togo. The foreign exchange reserves of member countries are pooled together and are required to deposit 50 to 65 percent of their foreign reserves in France. That means that the member states of the franc monetary zone only retained half of their money, with the currency being printed under the supervision of the French National Bank. According to France, the franc zone was intended to provide African countries with monetary stability. Member countries such as Ivory Coast experienced relatively low inflation at an average rate of 6% over the past 50 years, compared to 29% in neighboring Nigeria, a non-member country. However, to many, this monetary arrangement is a neo-colonial tax and is an insult to the sovereignty of these 14 countries. Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso attempted to cancel the agreement to hold at least 50% of their foreign reserves in France. He was a few months later assassinated. President Silvanas Olympio of Togo in 1963 made plans to issue a new currency. He too was assassinated barely three days to the launch. The message was clear. France wasn't fooling around. Assassination or being overthrown in coups was the result of daring to stand up to France. It was mandatory for a French official to sit on the boards of their central banks. To put it bluntly, 
a global behemoth with a $3.1 trillion economy, has been actively bullying 14 poor African countries and holding their economies hostage in a form of economic slavery. For French banks and the French state, it was raining cash. For the CFA countries, however, credits to their economies remained low, with short durations of repayment and prohibitively high interest rates. Former French President Jacques Chirac said that without Africa, France will slide down into the rank of a third world power. He added that we have to be honest and acknowledge that a big part of the money in our banks comes precisely from the exploitation of the African continent. It is unknown just how much wealth the African countries lost since the implementation of the CFA franc. Strap in your belts guys because as bad as this sounds, it gets worse. African leaders have had to guarantee French companies unfettered access to strategic resources such as diamonds, uranium, gas and oil. The result is a strong presence of French interests on the continent, including 1,100 companies and some 2,100 subsidiaries. France also retains the right of first refusal on all natural resources and gets privileged access to government contracts. France Afrique also entails more sinister aspects like political violence. The truth is, Paris did not shy away from eliminating those who stood in their way, nor from intervening militarily with boots on the ground if necessary, when popular revolts go overboard or when an unauthorized military coup threatens to put one of its puppet presidents out of power. In addition, all that was said and done by French authorities in the wake of the infamous assassination of Gaddafi in Libya and the occupation of Mali is consistent with the political rationale behind France Afrique. Today, there are many signs that the situation is however changing. Today's France is not Charles de Gaulle's France. It was not until the late 1990s that the concept of France-Afrique began to be challenged in France. In Africa, resentments and suspicion of collusion between some African leaders and France have become heightened in recent years as a younger generation enters the political arena. From the mid-1990s onwards, several governments have been working to reform France's engagement with Africa. Recent geopolitical events have spurred alignment of French foreign policy from being too African-centric. Yet old habits die hard when French interests are involved, which have often revolved around nuclear energy resources like the exploitative mining contracts of uranium from Niger. Gainful progress was eroded as Nicolas Sarkozy began his tenure as president in 2007 by making distasteful statements like, The tragedy of Africa is that the African has not fully entered into history. They have never really launched themselves into the future. When Francois Hollande became president in 2012, he had little choice but to focus on security issues in the Sahel. But with President Emmanuel Macron's accession to office, France has had a president fully aware of the need for change and with the political clout to attempt to fix the problem. He said colonialism was a grave mistake and began the return of cultural artifacts stolen from Africa during the colonial wars. He later flew to Rwanda to publicly acknowledge French failures during the 1994 genocide. A proposed revamped common currency in West Africa, known as the ECO, is to be launched later this year in a bid to replace the CFA franc which is still in use. During a trip to Ivory Coast in 2020, Macron announced that France is working towards loosening up the supervision of the currency. The currency name change is symbolic and historic, but if you ask me, it does not undo decades of French colonization in Africa. 
I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Please hit like and subscribe if you did. I also would like to thank our great supporters on Patreon whose generous contributions allow us to keep expanding and creating more high quality content. If you'd like to help out with the channel, please head over to patreon.com slash reason Africa. That's patreon.com slash reason Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.